climbing to new heights according to the latest 2024 election polls. He's pulled even with Harris in Virginia, commanding the swing states, and even holds a lead nationally, as reported by the New York Times. Today, we'll dive into the updated electoral map based on these shifts. Before examining the polls, let's first mark off the solid states for both candidates, narrowing the map down. Starting with Harris's secure states, she's expected to win California, Hawaii, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and Maine's first district. On Trump's side, he'll solidly take Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, North and South Dakota, all but the second district of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana, South Carolina, and Alaska. This gives the former president an early lead with 125 electoral votes. Now, turning to the latest Virginia poll, Donald Trump has tied Kamala Harris at 45% in a survey of 1,000 adults. This is a tough blow for the Harris campaign, especially in a state Joe Biden won by a margin of 10.1% just four years ago. Today, she's not even leading in Virginia, making it a key battleground. At this point, Virginia is just as competitive as Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. With its 13 electoral votes, Virginia has become a critical piece in the election puzzle. Donald Trump has effectively added it to the battleground map. In this survey of registered voters, Kamala Harris holds a slim 2% lead. However, with the margin of error in play, 2% is far from a comfortable advantage. Considering Biden's strong double-digit win here just four years ago, it's clear that Harris isn't performing at the level she needs to be. What's more telling is the comparison to 2021, when Glenn Youngkin, the Republican, narrowly won the governorship against Democrat Terry McAuliffe. McAuliffe was favored throughout the majority of that election cycle, with polls showing him solidly on track to win. But Youngkin pulled ahead in the final stretch. This mirrors what we often see with Donald Trump. He consistently performs better in late polling, particularly in late October and early November, than he does earlier on. If the trends from previous cycles continue, Trump may well be in a position to flip Virginia. Should that happen, Kamala Harris's path to the presidency will likely be non-existent. There's also a fresh poll from the New York Times that places Trump ahead of Harris, based on a sample of 2,400 registered voters. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Sorry. Yeah. Harris would make these Pennsylvania jobs disappear. And what's Bob Casey say about Kamala? People know that she's prepared right now to do this job. Casey and Kamala, those two, too weak. Wix. One platform. Any website. Unlimited creation. 1,400 registered voters. This marks the eighth consecutive poll where Trump leads, even though the New York Times is known for its left-leaning tendencies. They were notably one of the most inaccurate pollsters in 2020, overestimating Biden's support. If Trump manages to either win the popular vote or come close, he's in a very strong position to reclaim the presidency. He could even lose the popular vote by a margin of one to three points and still hit the crucial 270 electoral votes. On the other hand, Kamala Harris needs a national lead of at least three to five points to secure victory. As things stand, it's unlikely she'll meet that threshold. Turning to the electoral map, let's examine the likely states where candidates are expected to win by margins of 7 to 15 points. A solid state, remember, is one where the victory margin exceeds 15 points. Kamala Harris will still take Washington and Oregon, but not with the nearly 20-point advantage Biden enjoyed in 2020. The margins in these states could narrow to somewhere between 10 and 15 points. Illinois, with its 19 electoral votes, is another state where Harris is expected to win easily, though likely by a margin under 15 points. In Colorado, new polling shows Harris holding onto a slim double-digit lead, but far below the nearly 14-point margin Biden had in 2020. New York and New Jersey are also in Harris's column, but these states have seen their share of Democratic scandals, making the results less certain than in previous cycles. In New York, we saw the resignation of Andrew Cuomo due to sexual harassment allegations. Now we have Governor Kathy Hochul and Mayor Eric Adams, both of whom are facing widespread unpopularity. Across the river in New Jersey, Senator Bob Menendez has been repeatedly convicted of bribery. Delaware, which is in the likely category, doesn't lean as liberal as some of its neighboring states. As for Trump, his likely states are going to provide a solid boost. Let's start with Iowa and Ohio, two states that seemed more competitive in 2020 than they really were. In 2016, Trump turned both Iowa and Ohio red, winning them by almost double digits digits after years of Obama's control in those states. By 2020, Democrats were optimistic they could regain these states. Polls suggested Trump would only win by 1% to 
And at several points, Joe Biden actually led in polling there. But in the end, Trump took Iowa and Ohio by nearly the same margins as 2016. Looking ahead to 2024, it's clear Trump remains the solid favorite in both of these Midwestern states. Let's talk about Texas next. The Lone Star State was seen as competitive, largely due to some liberal-leaning polls that had the race within the margin of error. Some even predicted Trump would win by just 1%, similar to his expected results in Iowa and Ohio. But in reality, he won Texas by nearly six points. There was never really any doubt, and there shouldn't have been, that Texas would stay red. Joe Biden had no real shot there, despite Democratic polls and rhetoric suggesting that Texas might turn blue. Sure, the state is gradually leaning more to the left, but for a Democrat to win a presidential race in Texas, we're likely still decades away from that. It's a huge state, and converting the millions of voters needed for a Democratic victory here is going to take considerable time. By the time that happens, the Midwest will likely have solidified as a Republican stronghold. What we're witnessing is the Sun Belt inching leftward while the Midwest trends right. For now, Texas remains a solid red state. Over time, elections here will certainly become more competitive, but that's not a concern the GOP needs to worry about anytime soon. Florida, on the other hand, has now become almost a guaranteed 30 electoral votes for the Republicans. Back in 2020, Florida wasn't such a sure thing. It was expected to be one of the most fiercely contested states, which made sense given that in 2012, Barack Obama only won it by a razor-thin margin. In 2016, Trump won Florida by a tilt margin, making it highly competitive. But by 2020, no one thought Joe Biden would perform worse there than Hillary Clinton did. Yet Trump managed to improve on his 2016 showing. As a result, Florida Florida is now firmly in the conservative camp, especially compared to where it was four or eight years ago. Then, in 2022, Ron DeSantis won re-election as governor by a staggering 20-point margin, solidifying Florida's red status. Trump likely won't carry the state by more than 15 points, but a win by 7 to 10 points is realistic. These 30 electoral votes, which were far from guaranteed in the last election, are now almost a given for the GOP and for Donald Trump. Finally, we have Maine's 2nd District, which also looks like a likely red spot for Republicans. Now we're down to just 12 states, representing a combined 128 electoral votes. These are the key battlegrounds that will ultimately determine the outcome of the election. Without winning here, no candidate has a solid path to 270 electoral votes. Trump is already just 51 votes shy of that goal, while Kamala Harris hasn't even hit 200 yet. Looking at the latest swing state poll from Emerson College, the numbers are surprisingly strong for Trump, especially considering that Emerson tends to lean left. They significantly overestimated Joe Biden's support in 2020, which makes these new results even more favorable for Trump. He's leading in three of the seven swing states, and in three more, it's a dead heat. Honestly, when the polls show a tie, Trump is likely to tilt the outcome in his favor as he often performs better than polling suggests. The only swing state where Harris is ahead is Michigan, and even there, it's by just 1%. This is a troubling situation for the vice president. She's performing disastrously in critical states that she absolutely must win. She has to win Wisconsin. She has to win Pennsylvania. If she can't even pull ahead in the polls in those states, her chances are looking very slim. Joe Biden led by 8% in Wisconsin in 2020, and he won by just 0.6%. In Pennsylvania, he led by 6% and only won by 1%. Harris isn't even close to where Biden was, and she's well behind Clinton's position in 2016. Now let's take a look at the lean states, those that will be decided by a margin of 2 to 7%. These states will be hotly contested, and both campaigns will be pouring in resources here. Starting with the lean Harris states, we've got New Mexico. Harris faces... Bob Casey promised us his vote will reduce inflation. Casey's vote made it worse. Even he admits he failed. Chicken going up 38%. Toilet paper going up 35%. Bob Casey failed us. We need a change. Here, starting with the lean Harris states, we've got New Mexico. Harris faces a real challenge here as Hispanic voters continue shifting toward the right. Long-term Democrats will have a tougher time holding on to this state, though in 2024, it's less likely to be a major problem given Biden's strong showing in 2020. Democrats still hold a solid advantage for now. New Hampshire and Maine are also in the lean Harris category. These northeastern states could get very close, as they did in 2016. Clinton won New Hampshire by just 0.37% and Maine by 2.9%. Biden fared much better in 2020, winning both by almost double-digit margins. 
but in 2024, Harris will probably only manage a margin of 3 to 5 percentage points. That brings her total just over 200 electoral votes. As for Trump, he's got a longer list of lean states, starting with North Carolina. This is the only swing state that went red in both 2016 and 2020. Trump didn't win Nevada either time, but he carried North Carolina along with Georgia, Arizona, and the Rust Belt states in 2016. He lost all but North Carolina in 2020, but there's little doubt that the Tar Heel state will go red once again backing Trump for a third consecutive time. Let's take a look at Georgia first, which brings 16 electoral votes to the table. This was the tightest race in the 2020 election, where Joe Biden edged out a win by just 0.24%. Yes, the Democrats had a strong showing last time, but that was under highly unusual circumstances, which tilted things in their favor. We had a year-long pandemic and a recession brought on by that very pandemic. Those factors were the only reasons Biden managed to flip states like Georgia, Arizona, and possibly even Wisconsin. Without COVID-19, Trump would likely have secured a second term. That's why we're putting Georgia solidly in the red column. Trump is set to take it comfortably. It remains, at its core, a Republican-leaning state. The 2020 outcome was more of an anomaly. Remember, Trump won it by over five points in 2016. Next, we move to Arizona, another state that saw an incredibly close race last time around. Kamala Harris just isn't performing well enough here to take the lead. This is a state Trump won by almost 4% back in 2016. And according to Poly Market's latest figures, Trump now has a 62% chance of winning Arizona, making his odds here stronger than in both North Carolina and Georgia. Now let's talk about Nevada. Trump is in a much better position here compared to four years ago. Polls during the last election suggested he would lose Nevada by five or six points. However, Biden ended up barely improving on Hillary Clinton's performance, despite gaining ground in almost every other state. Nevada is clearly trending rightward. We saw in 2022 how Republican Joe Lombardo won the governor's seat ousting the Democratic incumbent. This gives Trump a solid shot at taking a state no Republican has won in two decades. That's why I'm placing Nevada as lean red, with Trump winning by just over two percentage points. Now let's shift our focus to the Midwest and the three crucial blue wall states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. These states are among the most pivotal in the nation. In fact, Pennsylvania is really under the spotlight now, with many people believing that the entire election could hinge on the Keystone State. If you take a look at the 2016 electoral map, it becomes clear why these three states hold such significance. Prior to 2016, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania were not seen as battlegrounds. These states had been reliably blue for nearly 30 years before Trump turned them red eight years ago. It was these three states that handed Trump the presidency in 2016, and then in 2020, Joe Biden reclaimed them, which in turn secured his victory. In 2020, Biden was expected to win Pennsylvania by six points, Wisconsin by eight, and Michigan by seven. But when all was said and done, his margins of victory were razor thin. In fact, if Joe Biden had lost Wisconsin, Georgia, and Arizona, each decided by less than 0.7%, he would have lost the entire election. That's how tight the 2020 race was, and Kamala Harris is currently polling significantly worse than Biden was four years ago. As a result, I'm predicting Trump will carry Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania by just over two points this time. Now we're left with just two tilt states and one key congressional district, all of which are expected to be decided by a margin of two points or less. First, I'll give Trump the second district of Nebraska. Over in Minnesota, the only reason I'm giving this state to Kamala Harris is that she selected Tim Waltz, the state's sitting governor, as her running mate. If Biden had remained in the race, I believe Trump would have had a real shot at winning here, a state no Republican has carried in 52 years. Finally, let's look at Virginia. With the latest polling data we've received, it's clear that Virginia is going to be extremely competitive. At this moment, I'd call it a toss-up. There's still a strong possibility that Kamala Harris holds on to Virginia, which hasn't voted red since 2004. But considering Harris's underperformance compared to Biden and Trump's usual polling surge at the end of the campaign, I'm now placing Virginia in the tilt red column. So based on the latest numbers, Trump could end up with as many as 326 electoral votes, while Kamala Harris would finish with 212. This would mark the worst Democratic showing since 1988. Thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more updates as we approach the November election.